Hey, it's Rob Snow White checking in on this ice storm day in 2021, February, preparing for the cicadas. We're going to have a lot of cicadas this year in the Mid-Atlantic. This is a 17-year brood X. There will be billions of them everywhere. And some of them are going to fall in the water, get eaten by fish. So we want to take advantage of that, if not just for the fun of tying these big clumps of flies. So I'm going to teach you how to tie a very basic pattern with some few materials. And if you don't have these materials, you can go to my Etsy page and purchase kits on how to tie them. Everything in here to tie five flies. So what you need to do to tie my Snow White Buggy Cicada, it looks like this from the bottom, and it looks like this from the top. It doesn't really look like much to you because you're not a fish. I'm not trying to make this anatomically correct. I'm not trying to have the focus of this bright red eyes or veins on the wings. I want this to look like the silhouette of an organism that falls in the water. And to you and a fish, it's going to look like that, floating around, making a racket on the surface. So let's do what we need to do here and put a hook in. We're going to use a 7041 from Fly Shack. What I'm going to do is use my 210 denier flat wax nylon in my regal vise. And I'm going to start the thread. I'm going to go all the way down to the hook point and then back up. That piece here, the tag end, we're going to fold that down too. And what this does is it gives us a nice base for a super glue to sit on. So the next thing you're going to need, super glue. Don't need it, but I like it. I'm using Loctite gel because it stays in place. It doesn't run. Then I've gone ahead and I've cut my piece of foam. Where do you get your foam from? <laughs> well, I get my foam in bulk, oh, man. Look at this. Hey, man, look at that piece of foam Snow White's got. It's huge, man. Look at, you can't even see me behind my foam. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Whew. That's a big piece of foam, right? Yeah. I do things in bulk. All right. So we've got that. We take our foam. And what I want to do is fold it over so it looks like this going onto the hook. When it goes onto the hook, it's going to spread that gel super glue out. I don't want to get it on my hands. I want to be stuck to my, my vise. So I'm going to take my first wraps here. I'm going to go down. I'm going to make probably five or six very small caterpillar-like segmentations. And you can see some of the gel super glue is coming out. What these are going to do is act on the segmentations on the ventral side of the fly. So the next ingredient we need now some orange scrub yarn. It's unidirectional, you can tie in whichever and you want. When tying things in, always leave that little nub, that's what you want to tie in. The more of those little circle and segmentations you make, the higher it's going to float and the more space you have for these. However, the more you crush them, you're condensing the cells of air and it won't sink as, sorry, it's not going to float as well. So from here now, I'm going to gently wrap back up each one of those segmentations all the way to the eye of the hook. And then I'm going to start wrapping. This is going to make that fly a little buggier, make it a little bit better vibration and presentation on the surface. And if you want to have an orange and black insect that mimics the natural, this is a good way to do it. at the eye of the hook, a couple of tugs because we're using strong thread. I'm going to cut this off and save it. So the benefit if you buy my kits, you're going to run out of hooks, but you're going to have plenty of this left over for Estaz bugs. You're probably going to end up with a chunk this big from each piece of foam to make a beetle or ant with. There's extra legs and other things in there. So the fly now looks like this. What we're going to do is fold over the foam. You can pull it and make this more tapered. I just want to fold it over and wrap right behind the hook eye. Now that right there is a pretty ridiculous looking terrestrial sand flea looking critter. We're not done there. The next thing is we're going to add eyes. I'm not making my eyes too particular. They're not the focus point on this. Fish are seeing them from below. We use spikies. If you have left over this in the kits, you can make some great sand wands. So I don't need too big of a piece. It's about that big. I'm going to tie that in crisscross, clouser eye style. These are just for the anglers, so you can show them off in your fly box in the parking lot. Show them off to your friends. Looks like that. 
Then I'm going to advance this back to where the thorax should be on this bug to tie in another segmentation. This is where we're going to wrap in our wings and legs. So the wings and legs are going to go in the same spot. I'm going to do the, the legs first. I'm going to take a whole bunch of different colored looking rubber legs. Here, and I'm going to cut them in half, one side per body part. And then I'm going to just put these right there, just like we would do the scorpion bug or a Chernobyl ant. I'm going to tie these in, pull them out, make sure somewhat even, trim them, pull them down so they're sticking out the side. These are to mimic fluttering wings and fluttering legs. They're supposed to be indistinguishable from each other in this pattern. I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to just tie these in, just like a, any other crazy looking buggy fly. Right, that right there is going to catch fish. These are uneven, so we'll visually just trim them up for ourselves. The fish are not going to care. Now we need to add the wing material. And then we're going to add a little bit of something extra. Maybe let's add a little bit of sinew. So I've got my pre made wing material here. If you got leftovers of this, you got stuff to make gar flies. And you can buy these coming soon on my website just to make your own gar fly. Just tie that down and boom, you've got a gar fly. So what I'm going to do is measure out enough that when I fold it over, say the thread, it will come just past the hook point. So that's measured in. What I'm going to do is fold the legs back. Put that down, and I'm going to tie it in with a crisscross, just like a clouser. Yeah, crisscross. Once you are securing that, you can put a little bit of solar res in there if you'd like also, just to secure it. I'm going to take a little bit of the Senyo Predator Wrap. This is not in the kit, but I'm going to add it in anyway. For mine, at least. This is just gives you a little bit more of the nation of the wings. Just a little clump there. Peel these wings back. The legs back. And I'm going to tie that in. I've only got green right now on my desk. I don't know where the white stuff is. Okay. That's looking pretty darn good. I'm going to pull that snug. This is what it looks like now. Fold this back and pull the wings and legs and everything forward. I'm gonna wrap this. That's gonna make the head. And then you just pull this up and trim it wherever you want. Like I told you, you can have extras. And then while everything is pulled forward, we're gonna pull our string back and make some huge half hitches that we're gonna throw in that little crevice. You could put a little yard indicator there but this thing's pretty big enough that I think you'll be all right seeing it and a third one just for fun I'm going to cut that I'm going to now pull the wings and legs back and spread them out pull them up a little bit if you want to even them out you can just go like this and there you have my take on Cicada for this year. You'll be able to find kits for these. RobSnowWhite.com. Click on the Etsy link. And uh, have fun tying them. Let me know if you have any questions.